I did most of my career at CERN. CERN is the European Laboratory for Particle Physics, the biggest physics laboratory in the world where we try and understand what the matter is made of, what the vacuum is made of, what, uh, where the universe comes from. And to do that, we need, we need technology and we need networking because uh, we, have, we work with thousands of physicists throughout right over the world. This is why we needed networking and connection. Uh, in '83, I was given the job to develop and improve the CERN external networking. At that time, we had a couple of leased lines, connections, one to France, the other one to the UK. And eight years later, CERN had become the largest internet hub in Europe, gathering in the order of 80% of the total bandwidth for internet installed, installed in Europe. And this was my job, to develop that from these two minuscule links to uh, the largest European hub of, for internet in Europe in, by 91-92. There were several, several moments uh, which uh, were particularly epic, I would say. Uh, some of our physicists were working in faraway countries, such as China. And I remember a memorable trip in Beijing to set up the very first connection between the National Physics Institute uh, in China and CERN, uh, a long line crossing China, Mongolia, and, uh, and the rest, and USSR at that time, and the rest of Europe. So there were some connections which were not easy to do, and we were pioneering often making the first connection between one given country and, uh, and, uh, and, and Europe and so on. I think that the current situation with the, with the internet uh, is a mix of uh, hopes and, and fears. Uh, the main fear I have, and I believe most of, most of my colleagues have, is uh, to see uh, the internet more fragmented than it is, and much more fragmented than we wanted it to be. When we designed it, we developed technology which was due to be open, which means that everyone knows the technology, everyone can develop it, and everyone can improve it as well. And the positive point is that it's still valid for some of what we call for part of the architecture. Uh, all the mechanisms which allow a piece of, a, of information to go from one place to the, to the other one, they still use open technologies, what we call TCP IP technologies. It has been challenged sometimes by companies which wanted to develop parallel proprietary technologies. It failed. Everyone knew that. Still the same technology which is open, known to everyone. This is a positive aspect. On the other hand, at other levels, what we call the application level, what you use, sometimes it's still OK. Mail, for example, if I send you a mail, if, you re if I receive a mail from you, this will use a technology which is uh, open to everyone. But for all the applications, uh, the world starts to be fragmented, and uh, mainly proprietary technologies are used, which means that you can only talk and communicate with your camp, and if you want to communicate with someone else, you need to use a different technology, and the two camps will not communicate. Think on the way in which you do visio, video conferencing, for example. It's one camp, or another one, or a third one. And you need to speak all languages and not a common language. There is no Esperanto language. You need to talk, to, to talk all languages and to be part of all the communities if you want to communicate with various parts of those communities. This is, to me, uh, one of the main threats. The other one, the one that everyone talks about is the, th the indirect threat, and it is through no fault of the internet. It is through the fault of our governments. The threat on the privacy, our privacy, your privacy, the privacy of our information. The fact that if I call you, this can be recorded. And if you call me, this can be recorded as well, your, S your messages and, and, all, and whatever web site you, 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 you navigate to. 
So this is through no fault of, of, uh, of the internet, but this is the fact that this is a powerful tool which allows for attacking privacy. This is a threat. Some of the actions to help maintaining the openness is to maintain in those organizations which develop the technology, essentially the IETF, the initial spirit of openness and the initial spirit of trying as far as possible to resist to the industrial pressures. It is natural, it is just normal that a company tries to uh, uh, lobby the evolution of the technology for their interest. This is what a company is for. But above that, there is the interest of the society at large. Um, so maintaining in structures like the IETF, which develop the technology, this open spirit where we try and minimize those influence, influences to keep developing technology, which is for the benefit of all and not for the benefit of one particular company is, is essential and this is what I believe will maintain a full openness in the future. I remember October 88, there was a second meeting of a complicated committee called CCIRN, Coordinating Committee for Intercontinental Research Network. It was held in West Virginia uh, and uh, there were a few Europeans. I was representing CERN, my organization, with a few others. And at the end of the meeting, which was focused on how to deploy the internet, our American colleagues, led by Vincent, told us, look, guys from Europe, if you are uh, interested in the internet, you should try and set up a structure to allocate the IP addresses yourself because we keep doing that for you. So if you are serious with the internet, try and do that in Europe. I returned to CERN in Geneva, and two months later, I called the meeting, and there was a handful of people, but very motivated people, who answered six people in total. Uh, Rob Blockzil and Daniel Karenberg from Amsterdam, Mats Brunel from Sweden, Enzo Valente from Italy, Olivier Martin and myself from, from CERN. Uh, we gathered in a small barrack uh, at CERN on a rainy day, and then we decided that we needed to set up that structure. In the middle of the afternoon, in the middle of the meeting, Daniel Karenberg proposed a name for that structure. He called it RIPE. It was a French acronym, Réseau IP Européen. And this is a structure which still now allocates IP addresses in Europe and far part of the world as well. Uh, so it's a small anecdote that tells that a handful of people motivated and willing to do things can achieve. Six months after this meeting, Rob Logzil organized the first forum for, I, for RIPE uh, in Amsterdam. And a couple of months later, Daniel Karenberg created the RIPE Network Coordinating Center which is still doing the job of allocating resources for internet uh, in Europe and part of the world. I believe that if talking about the main, one of the main threat, which is the fact that the internet has uh, become a sort of vehicle for government or a means for gov government for violating privacy of, of citizens and individuals, all means to, to denounce and to fight that are good. So this can be done via collective actions and a handful of people can gather together to, to, to hack together. You are stronger if you act together. But not forgetting that sometimes very influential individuals making their voice alone and their voice not being diluted uh, in a group may have also a strong effect. So I believe that uh, the most influential people, the most well-known people in the internet are welcome to denounce and to make their voice against the lack of privacy and the risks that the governments now are, 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 are making, as well as groups 
individuals can get can gather together, and also through organizations. The Internet Society, ISOC, is one of those big group vehicles that can uh, channel those messages. There is privacy, there is freedom, and these two must be respected as well, even though everyone understands the need uh, to protect society uh, and maybe some compromises need to be done here and there, but at least that we know what, what is being done with our data and in particular with our private data.